Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to give you guys a quick update on my amaryllis plants here. So as you can see they're in full bloom. Now they are unfortunately just past the very peak, the reason being I did a time lapse of them. So I'll show you the time lapse later when they were at their absolute fullest. But they're still looking really nice at the moment and they have done particularly well this year. So it looks like all of them are going to be having two flower spikes with four flowers in each spike. So that's eight flowers per plant, which I think is about the best I've ever had from these plants. These plants have been sizing up every year. I give them a slightly larger pots this year and they seem to have really have enjoyed it and they're really starting to grow quite big. Now when it comes to pot size with Amaryllis you don't really need huge pots. And certainly the original pots they come with are a little bit small so you can see this one at the back is in its original pot right at the back there which is a bit small but it's still flowering perfectly fine and it might even still have eight flowers. I'm not sure yet as it's only had one bloom so far but this variety does have larger flowers than the red ones and you can see it really have, has got massive flowers on it. So I'll give you a quick overview of how these have done. So the one at the back is a newer plant of mine. This flowered for the first time last year. I don't think it had as many flowers as it has now. But it did a very strange thing. Around about June time last year when it was in full leaf, it sent out one tiny little flower right at the base of the, the bulb, just in, in and amongst the leaves. It didn't have a proper flower stalk, it was just one individual flower. But it was the biggest amaryllis flower I've ever seen. I'll show you some photos of it now. And I also measured it as well with the measuring tape, just to give an indication of how large it was. So it really was quite spectacular and an unexpected bonus as it was not flowering when the rest of them normally flower. And when it comes to flowering time, these have been getting later and later for me every year. All these flowers originally flowered around about January time because I bought them around November, December, so they'd be flowering for Christmas. But all the bowls have been syncing up to what's probably more of a natural flowering time in my climate. So they all flower now about May time, which is quite late. I have been trying to encourage them to flower a bit earlier so that the leaves are up and established for May time when we have quite good sunlight levels. So hopefully if I can get them to flower a bit earlier and have the leaves up and have them in the growing phase a bit earlier in the year, they should have a bit more time to gather the sunlight and get better flowering for next year. So what I've been doing is I've been keeping them really dry over winter, quite cold as well, to force them into dormancy. But these plants just refuse to go into dormancy, even though I had it down to 7 degrees in the conservatory, 5 degrees a couple of nights, and I was pretty much not giving them any water for a couple of months. Their leaves were still green and they just didn't want to go dormant. So they did take a while, but they did eventually go dormant, and then they had a very short dormancy because not long after they went into dormancy, it was around April time, the sun started to come back in the conservatory, temperatures started to warm up, so they went straight into flowering. So it was a very short dormancy this year, but as you can see, they flowered well. So the one at the back, as I say, has got those four big flowers, and it's got a new big flower spike coming up. These have all been growing in exactly the same flowering environment, so with very good light levels, but for some reason, this variety at the back grows much taller stems than the red varieties. Then these ones down here, this one on the left, has already had four flowers in that spike and there's a, a second fl flower spike just behind that which looks quite large so I would expect four flowers in that again. This one on the right had a small stunted one which kind of grew at a weird angle, didn't fully develop and has started to die off. That's something that has happened previously on one of my bulbs. I think it was this actually this one on the left. The neck of the bulb gets too tight and it struggles to push the flower out so it comes out almost like a zigzag pattern or the stem's just really stunted. This is what's happened here and as the new leaves have come up it's probably choked it and it's killed off that flowering stem. So what I need to do on this one here is cut around the, the outside of the bulb, split it open very slightly at the top and just allow it to grow through better. I'll put a link up now in the iCard so you can watch a video where I did that previously and that saved the bulb because that bulb almost died because of that. It's just something that seems to happen occasionally with Amaryllis where they get choked at the top and they don't have the energy to push out and through and they just kind of have stunted leaves and stunted flowers and if you don't remedy it they don't always recover on their own and you need to cut them open to give them a little bit of a helping hand. So that's what's happened with this one. This one on the left is showing signs of it as well because you can see there's a slight kink in the flower stem there. That little kink in the flower stem is a, is a sign that the, the neck is getting a little bit too tight. So this one again I'll probably investigate it, take off some of the dead material around the neck of the bulb and try and encourage that to, to break through a little bit better. And then the other bulb on the left here, this one hasn't flowered at all yet, I'm not sure why. Most of my amaryllis tend to flower before they put up leaves. This one for some reason is leafing up with no sign of flowering. And it's not that the bulb is too small because this is actually one of the largest bulbs I have. This one here was my baby bulb and the one that I took off one of the original red ones. And this one, although it's not particularly large, has had eight flowers this year. This one here, very large bulb 
for some reason it's not flowered. It might just be a bit later. Um, they all should be pretty similar in the variety, apart from the one at the far back. They're all the same variety. So we'll see what happens. I'm hoping that they will flower still. Sometimes amaryllis do leaf up before they flower. Normally it's the flowers before the leaves, but just occasionally they do come at the same time or the leaves come slightly earlier than the flowers. So we'll see what that one does. Be interested to see what happens. It might do something strange like the one at the back did last year, where it grew that one little flower right at the very base, even though it finished leafing up. So we'll see what happens to that. And also I see this one has quite a good baby plant starting to come up on the side. So I'll be separating that probably next autumn or winter when the plants are dormant again. And that will give me another amaryllis bulb and that will take my total to five. So as I say, they've all done quite well this year. Quite happy with the growth. A couple of minor issues with that one not flowering and the other one starting to get slightly congested next to the bulb. So I'll be sorting that out soon, just cutting off the top and letting them come through. But all in all, quite a good flowering season. I've had these under the time lapse, so what I'll do now is I'll leave you with the time lapse footage to enjoy as they all come up and come into their full bloom.